Welcome all. Like I said, this is the fifth office hours of Romestack. Uh, Romestack, that's uh, me. My name is Ramses Oud. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands, Amsterdam, to be precise. Uh, my uh, my co-founder is Francis Miller. He's also here in the call. He's from the UK. And together we, uh, we run a community of uh, Rome power users, as we like to call it, or aspiring Rome power users. Um, so we are a community, we are a blog, we run a knowledge base with walkthroughs, tutorials, um, but all very much hands-on on one hand. And then on the other hand, we also want to educate people in the philosophical underpinnings of Rome. So working with Rome really requires another way of thinking. So if you come from Notion or from Evernote, you work really siloed, whereas in Rome, um, the, the core idea is to do networked thinking. So most of you are, are probably already familiar with Rome, uh, but maybe not with the plugin environment of uh, Rome. And that is another goal that we have with, uh, with Rome Stack is to educate people in the use of different Rome tools. And today's session is about Rome 42 and specifically, Rome 42's smart block function. I couldn't set up a poll um, before the, the call. So if you're not familiar with, with uh, smart blocks, please put it in the chat. I'm really curious to see who is uh, and who isn't familiar with, uh, with smart blocks, but we'll start really from the bottom, explaining the different components of, um, of the smart blocks, what they do, and I'll show you five different workflows today um, to, well, that help you automate things that you do weekly or daily. And then we'll end with Q&A. So after the workflows, um, there's room for, for questions, but please don't hesitate to put your questions in the chat because after every workflow, I will uh, have a look at the chat and see what questions um, um, arise with, within uh, the audience. So before we start, um, are there any questions about either Rome Stack or Rome 42 or smart blocks? Just before you think, okay, I just want to have this clear before we start. Just speak up if you want, unmute yourself, speak up or put it in the chat if you want. So it looks like most people fall in the category um, most people are in the category of not knowing anything and having started dabbling with it. So that, that is a perfect, perfect starting point. So maybe a first, um, introduction then is what are smart blocks? So, and Francis, maybe you can also put a link to the, um, to the article, uh, I wrote last week. Uh, that, that's actually a, a complete introduction to smart blocks. And some of the, the workflows I discuss in that article will also discuss in today's uh, session. But smart blocks are essentially collections of blocks that you can use as templates. So if you're familiar with Text Expander or Alfred or maybe TextBlaze, or even just the Rome 42 uh, template engine with the colon, the, the template name and then colon. Those are all ways to create templates. So with one snippet of text could be, I don't know, could be colon, daily colon, that then expands to an entire um, collection of blocks. So for example, if you have a daily checklist you need to run, um, check your to-do list, um, check your email, give food to your dog, whatever, you can templatize that and you can just with one text snippet, you can create, you, you can pull that, that text onto the screen. Smart blocks do something similar. So you can create a, a trigger and we'll dive into what a trigger is, but you can define a trigger. And then just by writing a few characters, you can create very, or, or activate very elaborate um, templates and they, they can be text templates or they can be automations where smart blocks go look for specific blocks in your Rome uh, database graph, 
that meet a specific condition. So in that, in that way, smart blocks are like a mix between templates and queries, if that makes sense. Let's dive into the demo. And I have prepared some things, but we'll, we'll build everything live. Uh, we are recording. The recording will be public. And um, Francis has just linked to, to the article if you want some more background info. But this session should be enough to, to get you started and to, to pique your interest for, for more elaborate workflows. So let's see. All right. I have some notes ready. So we're going to have a look at five workflows. That's a daily planning with to-dos, a weekly planning, a weekly review, a combined daily, uh, and weekly planning template and random branding prompt. We'll make use of different, um, so we, we first define a use case. That's how I normally like to work. So if you're not familiar with programming or writing queries, or maybe even writing formulas in Excel, if, if, if you've rarely done that, then starting with a use case or just writing out the, the functionality that your workflow needs to have is a really good starting point because then you don't, you don't really need to think about, okay, what code am I going to use or what command are, am I going to use? Um, and we'll get into what commands are in a bit, but by writing just out what you want the workflow to do in natural language, you can already get a sense of of how you're going to structure it. For me, it's really helpful, even though I'm used to programming. So um, for example, uh, workflow one, and we're going to dive directly into it. And I will, I will explain the different uh, um, concepts in, in smart blocks as we go along. Um, Let's see, so workflow one, that's a daily planning with to-dos. The use case is a daily template that checks what to-dos are tagged for today. And the ingredients we're going to use are the to-do today command. So the, the anatomy of a smart block is very simple and I will show you the, the, the workflow code that is associated with, with this workflow. And then we'll start building it. Oh, I see I'm in the wrong one. Smart blocks. All right. So the anatomy of a smart, smart block, it's very simple. It needs to contain the tag 42 smart block written exactly this way. There's a, a very simple way to, to do this for you. And I'll show you in a bit. Then the title of the, of the workflow and then nested underneath is the actual workflow. So this is called a, um, so this is called a workflow. This, this collection is called a workflow in smart block language. The name of the workflow is this. So in this case, I've named it W1 daily planning, and I can call this, this workflow, or can, I can activate this workflow by using a trigger. I'm going to show you in a bit how, how that's done. And within that workflow, I can use anything. I can use text. I can use uh, other block references. I can use embed. Essentially, anything that I can create in a block in Rome, I can create in a Rome 42 uh, workflow. But the cool thing is, there's also this little thing called uh, commands. So I've already mentioned it here. The ingredient, the command we're going to use is to uh, to do today. And I've already put it here. Um, and I will I will explain in a bit what what that means, what everything here means. But every command does something for you. So it's like a little program that runs. So I can actually let's go into the test area without triggering this workflow, I can just use the to do today little program by writing to do today. And as you can see, the top one is a smart block command. But if I would select the bottom one, I, um, it just runs the program. So I can, I can 
use smart blocks without creating them first. So let's run it. There's one to do, prepare office hours. So what this little program did was go through my entire database, look for any to do that was tagged for today. And that's this one. And we're going to build that this little um, this little workflow um, together. And I'm going to use the workflow starter. So I can manually write this tag, but I can also use the workflow starter. What it does is it, it will start a prompt and it asks, what is the name of the new workflow? So I'm going to call it W1 colon daily planning. And it creates the new empty workflow for me. So now I want to use the to do today um, command. So again, double double semicolon to do today. And again, it gives me the explanation, returns the list of bug refs of to do's for today. And then I get to enter uh, parameters. So what is a parameter that is to, to refine the behavior of, of this little program? So the first parameter is the, uh, the maximum number of blocks that is shown. And two, the second parameter is an optional filter value. So that can be just text. So I can say, I want to look for all uh, to do's that are scheduled for today and that contain a specific text or a specific tag. It doesn't have to be a tag. It can just be text because um, SmartBlocks also is able to look for text in, um, in blocks. For now, I'm going to leave it this way. Um, so it will retrieve a maximum, by, by default, a maximum of 20 blocks. And we can test it out by writing semicolon, semicolon, W1. And here again, the same block is retrieved. As you can see, it is a, it is a um, block reference. So if I click it, I get the, the context menu. However, even, even uh, when a to-do is block referenced, I can still click it and it's, uh, it's, it's marked as finished. And here I have some data where I pulled the block reference from. So as you can see, by clicking here, the block reference, the state changes of, of the, the original block. I can also see here that it was referenced. So for me, this is already a really cool feature. This is one of my favorite uh, commands to use in, in Rome 42. So that is workflow one. Let's see the chat and I'm going to take a sip of water. Paul is asking, why doesn't it immediately disappear when changed from to do to done? Because it's not a query. So query, for example, looks for everything um, uh, that that meets a, a specific condition, and then it just shows the block. What smart uh, what SmartLux does is create a block reference. So if I go and edit this block, you can see it's the block reference. So if I click this to do uh, and mark it as done, it's still referencing the block. So that's why it's not that's why it's not um, disappearing. If I would use a query. And I would say I want to see all to-dos that are marked for today and then enter uh, either today or the, the specific date. And then I would click it. Yes, then it would disappear. Let's see. Um, oh, Scott, very good comments. Uh, smart blocks are only available in the testers version of uh, Rome 42, but in the article that Francis linked to in the chat, um, I also explain how you can get that version of, of uh, Rome 42. And although it's a testing version, it is very stable. So 
I only use the testing version. I never use a stable version of uh, Rome 42. Um, so, uh, Baruch, sorry, I, I, I'm not covering ins uh, insulation. Please have a look at the um, article Francis linked to. Let's see, what other questions? Denise asked about the 20 in the in the in the smart block. That's that's the maximum amount of blocks that are retrieved. All right. Um, and Eric, I didn't share a Rome page yet. Um, I will make sure to set one up and add it to the video to the, to the recording description. And uh, Paul asked if you run W1 again after clicking then, it wouldn't show uh, though, right? That's correct. Because um, if we look at the data here, you can see it's no longer a to-do, it's now done. So I can show this by running the W1 workflow again, nothing appears because it's, well, it's now marked, it's done. Let's see. All right, those were the questions for workflow one. Let's move into workflow two. And I should speed up a little bit because I want to have about 20 minutes for Q and A. Workflow two, weekly planning. The use case is a template to plan the upcoming week from one overview, including planning tasks for the future. So they show up in the daily planning template. We're going to use uh, three ingredients, three commands. First, we're going to use the date command seven times. Why seven times? Well, to create links for every day of the week. Um, and personally, I like to do that because then from one overview, I can just um, plan to do's for, for every day of the week. Um, we'll use to do uh, undated to get all the to do's that don't carry a date. So we're not missing anything. And then we're also going to use to do overdue uh, command to retrieve all overdue, uh, overdue to do so with dates that were in the in the past. And there are two variations of this command. There's to do overdue and to do overdue do, uh, DNP. And the DNP stands for daily notes page. So if you use this command, then it will also look at your daily notes page and try to fetch all the to do's from your, from your daily notes. Um, and why is that? Because the daily note itself is a date. So anything you you place on your daily notes page is tagged or associated with that date. So so that's how it works. I hope it makes sense. Um, let's see, let's get started. At first, let's have a look at the finished smart block before building it up again. So as you can see, I have a few uh, subheaders. So I have a block with this week, and then you can see I pull in all the 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 days of the week. I look for the to do uh, that don't carry a date, and I limit it to one because I don't want. Probably I have some <laughs> uh, so some undated to dos that I didn't uh, finish uh, yet, and then overdue to dos. So let's start building this from scratch. So like this, uh, instead of using the, the workflow starter, I'm just going to write this manually. So smart blocks, oh, smart block, and then W2, uh, weekly planning. All right, so what's the first thing to do? Oh yeah, days this week. Then nested underneath, I'm going to do dates. Let's see, I'm going to select this one, date. And it tells me returns a Rome formatted dated page reference. So it will create a link. And 
the first arguments after the colon, so the first input I can give is the NLP ex expression. NLP stands for National Language uh, Processing. So I can just use the, the days um, of the week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but I can also use last Monday or next Monday and it will, it will interpret what I mean and then it will select the, the correct day. And then there's a second, um, there's a second parameter I can use, but I'm not, not going to use it. All right. So first going to copy this one, put in Monday. Let's see, one, two. Oh, all right. So Tuesday, Tuesday. Yes, it's manual work, but I only need to do this once. Sunday. All right. So I can already test this. So for example, write this one. Nice. It works. I like to test while I'm uh, creating little programs just to, to make sure I'm not breaking stuff uh, midway. So this works, as you can see, I've created the links of, and it even looks back. So it's now December 17th, but Monday it was the 14th. And it just looks for, okay, Monday was the 14th. So that works, cool. Let's continue. Um, I want to use undated, um, undated to-dos. So I'm going to call the to do undated. Oh, to do undated. Yeah. And let's limit it to one block for now. And then uh, to do uh, past to do's, past to do's. And for now, I'm not going to use to to do overdo DNP because, like I said, I will get too many um, to do. So we're going to use to do overdo. Yeah. And then by default, it also uh, grabs 20. All right. This should be enough. So I'm going to test it. Oh, double semicolon. All right. Creating the links. And yeah, it worked. Nice. So no undated to do's, past to do's. Had to flush the teeth of my cat yesterday. Shit, forgot. <laughs> so that's that's uh, how the retrieval works. Um, and works really well for, for, for weekly planning sessions. Um, I like to look back what I missed in the past and then uh, look to the future. And the cool thing is I can just, um, I can grab these past to do's. Uh, I can open up them up, for example, in my uh, sidebar and then just drag them into, into here, for example. Not going to do that now because I need this data for testing later. So that's workflow two. Going to take another sip of water and see if there are more questions. Scott, uh, anyone using smart blocks uh, in part of their space repetition strategy? I've seen one article um, that uses queries and then tags the cards based on what box they are, but this is a very manual process. You could do it because anything that a query does can uh, a smart block can do. I would love to see that. Um, Kartik, yes, there will be a recorded video available. Um, yeah, so Denise, why did it look back to Monday earlier in the week rather than the upcoming Monday, thus showing a rolling seven days? If you use the the just the, the day of the week, it will only look at the current week. So um, it's, it's, it's just a, a, 
you, you should ask uh, Rome Hacker, Chris. I don't know if he's he's here, but it, it just looks at the current week. If you want to look at, if you want to have a rolling, yeah, if you want to have a rolling uh, one, you, you could use another expression. For example, instead of um, um, Monday, you could use uh, today, and then you can say tomorrow, uh, and then you can say two days from now, three days from now, four days from now, and then it will interpret it the same way. You, you can use it the same way. So instead of using Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you say one day from now, two days from now, three days from now. That that should work. Hmm. John, uh, so would you drag the to-dos under each day to plan your week in that last workflow? Yes, yes, that's what I would do. Um, can you use drag and drop without using the sidebar? And will that change the date? Um, is Paul asking? It will not change the date because uh, the workflow only creates um, block references. So putting it anywhere doesn't change the block itself. And besides, I put the date in in the in in the block. So unless Rome Hacker comes up with some way to intelligently change that, uh, that's not possible right now. And does the current week start from Monday or Sunday? Uh, good question, Aha. Um, I I notice it's it looks to start. It seems to start on Sunday. Um, yeah, it, it's weird because the so this is the 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 date picker from Rome forty two, and it starts on Monday. But when I use when I use this on Monday and I put in Monday, it will it will pull the it will pull another date so i i have to use if i'm correctly i have to use next monday i think or most of the time i just use today all right uh baru's gonna ask if smart block top open an application oh to open an application outside of rome um I think so, yes, but then you would need to use uh, JavaScript, and that is way out of the scope of the session. Right, many questions. Uh, I, I am going to move on to, to the next workflow. Uh, if there are still questions at the end, please uh, please let me know. Um, and there will be a recording available so you can uh, come back to how I did everything. All right, weekly review, very simple. Oh. Should first show the use case. Weekly review, a template to review the past week, looking for blocks that were tagged for review. So in this case, I'm going to look for blocks that were specifically tagged with a specific tag. Um, and for this, I'm going to use the, the block mentions command. Again, you could use a query for this, um, but what would be the fun of that? <laughs> so. We're going to build the, the weekly review. And uh, let's use the, the starter tem template. So W3, weekly review. And then I need to peek. Oh, yeah, to process. I used to process. So I'm going to use block mentions. And as you can see, there, there are a few um, options, so I can also look for block mentions within a specific date. And again, very similar to queries. And it tells me returns a list of blocks mentioned. The first parameter is the maximum block uh, blocks to return. Then two, page or tag name, and then three is filtering. So something very cool about this, about uh, uh, smart blocks is that it can look for text. So queries can only look for links. You can only use queries when you have linked up your blocks. But uh, smart blocks can also look for text. In this case, we're, we're, we're not going to dive too deep into it. I just want to have it mentioned. For now, we're only going to use, uh, or only going to retrieve a maximum of five blocks and they have to be tagged to process. Look out 
don't use a tag here, even though this is a tag or a or a link. Don't use brackets or or a hashtag. Um, you you don't use hashtags or or brackets uh, to input a tag name or link name in in Smartbox. So that's it. Let's see. We're going to run. Oh, we're going to run workflow three weekly review, and again, found finds this um, this one that I tagged for to process. I could further uh, refine this. I could say I only want to have uh, any any mentions of blogs that are tagged with to process and that contain the text notes. So this way I would get the same, same block. So that's workflow three. Um, let's see a question from Denise. Denise, I missed how you hit the list of date page blocks that originally showed when you ran it. Y you mean just collapse? this way or do, do, do you mean something else? Um, could, could you please specify Denise in the chat? Um, let's, uh, Paul, if you move an undated to do under date, will it stay there next time you run the W2? Yes. Um, Rome, sorry, uh, smart blocks only look for dates uh, that are in the same block. So it will not look at the parent block. So if you if you have a to do and the parent block is a date, but the to do itself isn't tagged with the date, it will not show up. Uh, the only exception are daily notes. Uh, uh, sorry, to do is on the daily notes page because then you can use something like to uh, to do overdo DNP. So some some commands have a DNP function, and then it will look at the parent block. And the parent block in the case of a uh, dating notes page is the date. That's that's the parent block. All right. Um, Stephanie, could you plan an entire month by making the right smart block formula? Yes, you could. Um, yeah, you could. But then you would need to do one day from now, two days from now, three days from now. But it's it's possible, yeah. Uh, maybe someone has a, a better way, but that that's what first pops up in my, in my mind. Um, so I have a tag, uh, and Baruch asks, I have a tag called inbox. How can I make a smart block to show all pages that are ta tagged with that? Just use the, oh, just use the block mentions uh, command, but make sure to tag those individual blocks with inbox because it will again it will not look at the parent. Let's move on because time is ticking fast, <laughs> but the last two shouldn't be too complex. So, in workflow four. We're going to combine the daily and the weekly planning, and I will be copying the uh, workflow one. Um, so this is a daily template that also checks what day it is. If the current day is Monday, it will also show the weekly planning template. So this is really powerful. This is this this all this removes creating a separate weekly planning um, template. So we're first going to look at the at the commands and then the structure and then um, build it from scratch. So let's see, we're going to use the ingredient if day of week. So this is a conditional in, in programming terms. So it will look if today is a specific condition. If it's not, it will not execute the block. If it is, if it does meet that condition, it will execute that block. So in this case, I have this bunch of um, date blocks that I created in workflow one, and I gave this if day of the week 
is one. And we'll get into a bit uh, what it will look like. Then this is the same from before, so we'll we'll skip this for, for now. Um, yes, let's let's build it and then then run it. I was thinking to first run it, but so daily and weekly planning. I'm going to delete this one and create a new one. All right. So it's it's almost the same as this template. So just going to copy this. Uh, make this block. All right. If I run this now, this will appear because now it's not looking what day of the week it is. To do that, I'm going to add this con uh, conditional. So it's if day of the week. I can also say if day of the month, but I'm going to stick if day of the week. Again, I get an explanation. So, uh, it compares today's date. One, um, so it carries one par parameter, as you can see. It's a comma-separated list of days of the week. One is Monday, seven is Sunday. So I can say, I want to show this every Monday and Sunday, and I can say one comma seven. So that then it will execute on Monday and, and Sunday. For now, I'm going to only execute it on Monday. All right, let's, let's test it out. Oh. Oh. I have to add the W4. All right, let's run it. W4. Hey, what's happening? Well, I said it should be Monday, and then it executes this. So it worked. Um, it's not showing this block nor anything that's nested underneath. So very powerful. Um, today is Thursday, so it's the fourth day of the week. I'm going to run it again. Fingers crossed. W4. Works. Great. All right. As you can see, it's it's not super fast because it's 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 a script, so it looks at every block what it has to do. So it has to process every block individually, but it works. It works flawlessly. Um, for me, th this is one of the 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 prime the prime use cases of uh, of smart blocks in my my opinion, uh, at least how I use them. All right. Um, so Paul is asking, so you do have to automate the triggering of the workflow somehow though. Yes, um, I do have to manually type um, the or, or trigger the, the workflow. So when I type the double, double semicolon, that is called the trigger. And by selecting a trigger name or, or starting to type a trigger name, I can select a workflow. So this is a trigger which you can see here. Um, I've seen some stuff uh, already on Twitter where people automated their the, the, the creation of their daily notes. So every night the clock would hit 12 and then at that moment um, uh, a template is, is generated. But for that, you need to have API access or you need to create some kind of uh, of browser extension or server extension, I don't know. It's it's very it's very complex for now. Um, it's it's not user friendly yet, and it's not well. You, you need access to the API or extensive programming experience. I believe it will come to to the masses once the API is publicly available, because um, it, as you can see, there's already so much possible without an API. Let's move on to the to the to the final workflow. Oh, 
let's see, a random writing prompt. So the use case is pull a random writing prompt from a specific page, either showing it as a block reference, so the resulting uh, writing is linked to the prompt, or the text of the prompt itself. So as you can, as you saw, every everything I did so far, um, if I if I was dynamically um, trying to find a block, block, it would insert a block reference, but Rome 42 or smart blocks also has a command or function to turn that block reference into text. And then it will just take the text from the original block and it will copy it uh, here. We'll have a look at both. So first have a look at the, at the simple, at the simple way of, of doing this. So we use the random block from command and I look at the page journaling prompts. So it will look, uh, it, it will pick one specific block from the page journaling prompts. And again, see that I didn't add brackets or a hashtag, even though it is a page name. I know I only have one prompt in this specific page, so we can run it. And as you can see, it pulls a uh, blog reference and the writing prompt is what's something that made you happy today for sake of time. I'm not going to build it from, from scratch. We've done that enough. What I, I am going to do is turn this block reference into text. So I'm going to use the resolve, uh, block ref at end. So what it does at, is it will first execute the entire workflow. It will first go through all blocks. And then it will go back and look for this command at the end. And then it will, it will process that command. So what I'm going to do is leave this for now like this. And I'm going to pull in resolve block ref at end. And then it says convert block ref to text as last step in the processing block and it takes in a block reference as input. The problem is I don't want to show the same block reference every time, because if that were the case, I could just put in the text. So I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to use this as input. So I want to use the random block as input and then turn it into text. So what I do is I will cut this and where the parameter goes. So where the parameter is, I will just put the entire command. So this is called nesting, <clears throat> sorry. So this is called nesting. This means I'm nesting another command uh, into um, a, an outer command. So what it does, because this, this executes at the end, it first looks for a block reference in the back end. In, in the back, it, it puts the, this block reference here and then at the end of the workflow, it will turn that block reference into uh, text. So let's trigger this block now, W5. And it's searching and it's done. As you can see, no more block reference. This is just text. I can, I can change this. It will not affect the original. Um, I can go to journaling prompts. Uh, prompts. So there's only one block, but as you can see, I've bolded this, but it's not changing here. And why is that? Because it's just text. It just turned the block reference into, uh, into text. If I did this, so I bolded in the source and I run it again. Hope, oh, hope this works. Yeah. Then it will pull the, the, the markup and it will um, put it here. But that means I can now make it not bold anymore. And now it's this, and it doesn't change the prompt. So those are the workflows. Let's open up the room for discussion. Whew. That was intense for me. <laughs> I, hope, I hope it was clear. I hope I wasn't becoming too technical. Uh, please. If you have a question, put it in the chat. You can speak up directly. Feel free. Uh, 
but first you have to unmute yourself. Um, I'm going to have a look at the chat. Paul, you have a question about the planning aspect. Do, do you want to so, unmute? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's great. Listen, firstly, thanks so much for this. This is uh, amazing work and uh, really appreciate it. Um, so I guess my question is, if I'm, you know, the, the, the idea here is I'm going to move my, my task management, my to-do list from what I'm using now into Rome, which is fine. Um, but it, the, and I just, so the question is, if you go through this weekly planning and you go through rearranging and putting your tasks under the different date, do you keep having to go back to Monday's daily page or to your, like to that specific page to see what you planned? Or if you do, you know, weekly planning workflow on Wednesday, just to see, well, where am I at? Do you have, you know, will it be back to unplanned again, uh, you know, situation? Mm, yeah. So the, 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 the weekly template only triggers if it's a specific day or I only use it a specific day. Um, the reason I create those links is because if I nest to do's underneath those links, when the day uh, comes around that I have to do those, those tasks, Okay. They, they will be in the linked references. So I can mostly, I will move them out of the linked references in onto the, the daily notes page. Um, but that, that's basically how it works. So that's why I create the links because then I have my to do's just in my linked references. And then the only thing I need to do in the morning is trigger my daily template. I have a heading for to do's. And then I drag all the all the link reference all the to dos from the link references onto the page. Um, so so that's what I normally do. It's still manual. There's no automation yet. Um, it's a very good use case, though. I'm going to talk to Chris see if if there's some way to, to pull to dos or to pull blocks and move them actually from from one page to another because now it it really works with block references. So it okay. isn't moving the block itself. If you could actually change the date, the date reference from where where it was. If I didn't do it yesterday, and I want to sort of in bulk move all my un, undone things from that were already listed as being supposed to be done yesterday to today, because yeah. that's what I have to do now manually with the current system that I use. It's like I drag them all from yesterday. Okay, all the things I didn't get done. So yeah, yeah so um, the. The solution I would say for now is to, yeah, the solution now would be to use the overdue um, um, command. Yes, it creates block references, so it doesn't actually move the to-do, but as I shown, you can just tick them and uh, uh, turn them to done from, yeah. from the block reference. So if, if, you, if you complete a to-do, Using a block reference, the next time it will not show up if you call the same the same command again. It's it's really interesting, uh, and uh, you know, yeah, it, it opens up a whole other uh, a whole other use for for Rome that uh, makes it a yes. lot easier to use it in this in this way. So that's great. Mm. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Well, we have to th thank Chris. I'm I'm just uh, the messenger just trying to get more people using this. Because um, like you say, just just the your use case, I wouldn't have thought of it. I, I would have thought, oh yeah, I have to, I have to block reference. But you say, hey, but I want to move the actual blocks. So now I can go to Chris and I say, hey, have you considered this? So that, that's how the product also becomes, uh, becomes better. Um, let's see. Jim, it would be nice if this was native to Rome. Yeah, don't hold your breath. <laughs> I love the Rome team, but uh, they have different priorities, obviously. So, uh, and and just a very very short rant. But what I love about plugins is that it it avoids people. Well, Obviously, you can hide features so they're not in your face out of the box. Microsoft Excel is vast there I, I'm a data analyst and <laughs> there's so much possible with Microsoft Excel but most people don't don't use 99% of the of the the features 
So you, you can hide all that and it's, it's, it's can still be very beginner friendly. Personally, I love plugins because um, the, the, the Rome team has so many different uh, stakeholders, so users, but also their roadmap. Whereas Rome Hacker, this is a p passion project. We, we are with a bunch uh, in a Slack channel and we, we share ideas and then Chris sometimes builds it within 10 minutes and he says, oh, I just pushed a, uh, a change, just refresh and uh, see if it works now. So that is amazing. That That is the power of plugins. And what we've already seen is that some of the features, so like the, the toggles for the left and right sidebar, those were originally features that originated in Rome 42 that then the Rome team uh, adopted or adapted to the, the native uh, um, app. So I think, I think it's a strength, um, the, the way the, the Rome sphere is, uh, is currently built up. So we're almost at the top of the hour. I've been, uh, I've been doing most of the talking, but I hope it was useful. I hope it wasn't too technical. If you want to dive deeper into this, um, I will link to the article again. We'll put it again. So there's also a link to how to install plugins. So we've also written an article about how to install plugins. Then uh, the article about uh, smart blocks. We also have a Rome 42 article. Um, and then obviously within the, the member area, we have a community. It's about, oh, well, we have about close to 300 members already. So uh, it's, it's really growing fast. And there, there are people with all, from all walks of life. Uh, we talk a lot about journaling uh, in the community, but sometimes you just need some help with, uh, with a workflow. And there are many places you can ask. The, I would say that the USP of Rome stack is that if you have a question, and we don't have the answer or nobody else in the community has, has the answer, we go out and look for you. So, so I would say that that is the added also one of the added values of, of Rome stack. So if you're not on Twitter, if you're not on Slack, uh, if you're not on the, the official Rome forum, no worries, uh, just only join Rome stack. It'll be set <laughs> that, that at least that's, that's, uh, our goal. Um, so please have a look at roamstack.com. I will also put the URL. You can sign up for our free newsletter. So uh, we send it out every two weeks. That The next one will not be in two weeks, but January 1st. And we share resources from the community. We uh, link to our own blog posts. We um, pay extra attention to uh, new features that are launched within Rome, but um, often the the Rome team only puts new features in the help database or only on Twitter. So we see that it's our job to to go and fetch those from all the different corners of the web and put them in the in a newsletter. So definitely sign up for that. Um, what else? I think I'm not forgetting anything. I see Chris. Oh, Chris, we have Chris here. Hey, man, were, were you here the whole time? Yes. You did awesome. Nice. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Such so a happy. Wonderful explanation. And I mean, you didn't pay me to say this, but I'm just going to say it. Uh, Rome stack is definitely worth uh, subscribing to for the help that you get. And thank you. And Great. Friend, uh, Rome brain also amazing resources. So thank you guys. I, I enjoyed watching that. It was really interesting to see a very different perspective on something that, uh, yeah but a really useful perspective. So thank you for that. That's great. I, Happy you're here. On YouTube publicly, or is this going to be available? Yes. Back subscribers yes. or public. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, it will take a while because I'm going to edit everything. <laughs> I'm going to chop them up in, in clips or at least put timestamps. So uh, I, I've, I've given myself until the end of this year. <laughs> but... Um, Sorry? We demand by 2021 to get it. Oh, shit. <laughs> Pressure. Okay. I will, I'll try my best. Great, great to have you here, Chris. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, and thank you for creating this. 
So in the meanwhile, if, if you have questions, uh, my Twitter handle, you, you can tweet me. My DMs are open. My Twitter handle is at R out. So just my initials and my last name. Um, let's make this a little bit easier. So just ask me a question if things are unclear. Um, what else? There is the, the, the Rome Slack, and there's also a Rome 42 channel. So if you want to dig deeper into this, I definitely recommend you, you join on Slack. And that's it. So if there are no more questions, I want to thank you all for your attendance, for your questions, for your uh, comments. Very useful. And uh, see you next time.